Good morning, everybody. That's just about just about there. One more time for Jesus. Good morning, everybody. Amen. Amen. Whoever's able, please stand in honor of God's word, please. We're going to be coming out of Judges, 16th chapter, starting in verse 6. So Delilah said to Samson, please tell me where your great strength lies and with what you may be bound to afflict you. And Samson said to her, if they bind me with seven fresh bowstrings, not yet dried, then I shall become weak and be like any other man. So the lords of the Philistines brought up to her seven fresh bowstrings, not yet dried, and she bound him with them. Now men were laying in wait, staying with her in the room. And she said to him, the Philistines are upon you, Samson. But he broke the bowstrings as a strand of yarn breaks when it touches a fire. So the secret of his strength was not known. Then Delilah said to Samson, look, you have mocked me and told me lies. Now, please tell me what you may be bound with. So he said to her, if they bind me securely with new ropes that have never been used, then I shall become weak and be like any other man. Therefore, Delilah took new ropes and bound him with them and said to him, the Philistines are upon you, Samson. And men were lying in wait, staying in the room, but he broke them off his arm like a thread. Delilah said to Samson, until now you have mocked me and told me lies. Tell me what you may be bound with. And he said to her, if you weave the seven locks of my head into the web of the loom. So she wove it tightly with the batten of the loom and said to him, the Philistines are upon you, Samson. But he awoke from his sleep and pulled out the batten and the web from the loom. Then she said to him, how can you say you love me when your heart is not with me? You have mocked me these three times and have not told me where your great strength lies. And it came to pass when she pestered him daily with her words and pressed him so that his soul was vexed to death, that he told her all his heart and said to her, no razor has ever come upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite to, the, to God from the, my mother's womb. If I am shaven, then my strength will leave me and I shall become weak and be like any other man. When Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up once more, for he has told me all his heart. So the lords of the Philistines came up to her and brought the money in their hand. Then she lulled him to sleep on her knees and called for a man and had him shave off the seven locks of his head. Then she began to torment him, and his strength left him. May the word of the Lord be blessed. Amen. Amen. Pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father God, Lord, we just want to look to you right now, God. You are the author and finisher of our faith, Father God. You are Lord of Lord, King of King, Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end, the first and the last, Heavenly Father God. We thank you, Lord, that your word doesn't come back void, Father God, that your yea is yea, Father God, that healing has been done already, Father God, that saving has been done already, Father God, that forgiveness has been done already, Lord. You remember our sins as far as from the east is from the west, Father God. So I don't know what everyone's been through this week, Lord, but Lord, I pray that you have your way with them right now, Father God. You remove any distraction, Father God, remove anything that's hindering them, Heavenly Father God, that will prevent them from hearing from you this day, Father God, that will prevent them from getting their breakthrough this day, Father God, if it's a breakthrough they're seeking, Lord, that will hinder them, Heavenly Father God, anything, Lord, we just ask you to have your way with them right now, God. Hey, Lord, you've already brought them here this morning, Father God. We pray for those that are on the way here that just didn't make it yet, Father God, and we just ask that you engulf in this place, Father God, that you put a fire on us like it never before, Father God, that the time be now, Father God, that we don't wait another second, that we don't wait another minute, Father God, to give you what's already owed to you, Heavenly Father God. Lord, that we give to you, Father, that we surrender unto you this day, Father God. 
Hold we not wait another second, Father God. Let us not let this not just be another day, Heavenly Father God. Let this be an encounter with you this day, Lord. You touch the hearts and minds of your people, Father God. Touch the man of God, Lord, that will bring your message, Lord. We pray as he pours out, Father God, and he's your willing and able vessel, that you replenish him, Heavenly Father God. You know what you sent your son through this week, Father God, and we just pray, Father God, that it was all for the edifying of your people, Father God. We know sometimes we have to go through when you give us a message to deliver, Lord. So, Lord, I just pray for my brother right now, Lord. I pray that nothing is hindering, Lord, that you be his mouthpiece this day, Father God. We pray for his family, Father God. We ask you to keep them at perfect peace, Father God. Keep them in health and in strength, Lord. And we just ask you to have your way this day, Father God. We thank you and give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Hallelujah. Let's exalt the name of Jesus on this morning. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. He is worthy to be lifted up. 
Hallelujah. I don't know about the rest of you, but I had a week from you nowhere last week. And I'm going to tell you, I didn't come in here to sit down on Jesus. I came in here to give him the glory. Hallelujah. I came in here to give him the glory. Hallelujah. The enemy's been on my trail all week long. And I don't know about you or what you have going on. But I know God inhabits the praises of his people. Amen. He inhabits the praises of his people. Hallelujah. It's not time for us to keep our mouths shut. But it's time to open our mouths. Hallelujah. It's time to shout hallelujah. Because the enemy may have thought that he had you. The enemy may have thought that he had you. But you are here today. Hallelujah. Not everybody lived to see this day. But we did. We have breath in our bodies. We have operation of our limbs. We can stump our feet. Stump on the double head. Amen. We can do it this morning. Hallelujah. So I don't come in here and take for granted that I am able to give God the praise on this morning. Everything may not be perfect in my life, but I serve a perfect God, amen? I serve a perfect God, and with God, nothing shall be impossible, hallelujah. I don't know what you brought in here, your secret struggles, hallelujah. Your secret prayers, your unspoken prayers. But if you would allow God to do what it is that he does, if you will allow him to do what it is that he does, I know that he's able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that our little minds could think. Amen? He's able to do it. So I invite you to give it to the Lord on this morning. I invite you to give it to him on this morning. Pastor preached a message last week. Come unto me, all who are laden, who are weary and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Come unto me, not me, God. Come unto God, all who are weary and heavy laden, and he will give you rest. And, and I need that rest, amen. Not the rest just to sit down and do nothing, but the rest that is that peace that surpasses all understanding, amen. The peace in our mind that surpasses all understanding, hallelujah. God hears your prayers in the midnight hour. I'm here to tell you, God hears your prayers in the midnight hours. He sees the tears that nobody else can see. He sees the secret worries that nobody else knows about. He loves you. You are his children. Amen? You are his children, and he loves you more than you can ever imagine. So I invite you on this morning not to come in here like you normally do, not to leave the way that you came in, but to leave better, to leave refilled, to leave rejuvenated, to to, re to leave with those chains that are having you bound, to leave with them broken. Amen? We don't come here every Sunday just to check a box. We don't come here every Sunday just to check a box, to say that we came. We all come because of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We come to bless and be a blessing, to receive a blessing or to be a blessing. We come to receive a blessing or to be a blessing, or both. You can be a blessing and receive a blessing, amen? Hallelujah, glory to your name, God. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise on this morning. We serve a good, good father. We serve a good, good father, hallelujah. He has been good to me. The Lord laid a scripture on my heart this morning. I know we're past scripture time, but I'm gonna read it. It says, lift up your heads, all ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? Hallelujah. The Lord and God mighty. Hallelujah. The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Has he fought any battles for you? Has he fought any battles for you? Has he brought you out of anything? Has he brought you out of anything? I double dog dare you to give the Lord a hand to praise your best praise. Not your lazy praise, not your tired praise, but your best praise. God is wanting our best, our first fruit. Hallelujah. Give him a praise for all that he has done for you, for all that he is doing right now, and for all that he's going to do. We serve an awesome God. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Lord, we just love you today. Hallelujah. I am up here to do the welcome. But I can't get before my Lord without giving him praise, amen? Without giving him the glory. Bless your name, Jesus. We just thank you on today for who you are and for all that you've done in our lives. You are just so good to us. So good to us. I woke up this morning and, um, you know, the, the enemy tries to always come in when, when you got something to do, you know. And my husband's up studying and, and we didn't hear from our daughter yesterday. She went and did a track meet and... 
um, she usually call us right after they were done about 4 o'clock. We didn't get a call, but I was so tired by 7 o'clock, I fell asleep. Camille called her about 11 o'clock, no answer from her. And this is the one that answers the phone and is uh, pretty responsible. And so we fell asleep, and we woke up this morning, and I called her. She still didn't. I'm like, oh, goodness, she ain't answering her phone. So I called my other daughter. She's at a friend's house. I said, did you see Twyla? And she's like, um, no, I didn't stay home last night. I stayed with my friend. And I said, oh, okay. So, of course, immediately, immediately, the enemy starts putting all kind of thoughts in my head, you know, all the stuff that didn't happen with other college kids when the parents call. Oh, you're going to get a phone call from the hospital. Oh, you're going to get a phone call from the morgue. Oh, she doesn't normally do this. And I mean, he just began to speak and began to speak. And as he began to speak, I began to pray. And I began to pray. And I began to pray. And I began to trust the Lord with all my heart and not lean into my own understanding. But in all my ways, I acknowledge him. So he shall direct my paths and the paths of my thoughts. And I began to thank God for, for keeping her. Although I didn't know she'd been kept, but I said, Lord God, you won't put this on me. I know you wouldn't. I know she's fine. So I got in the shower, got ready, and my phone rang. It was my baby. I said, hallelujah. I don't take for granted because some people have gotten a phone call that their child was not okay, that their child was not okay. But I praise God on this morning because I got the call. And I know, you know, they think I, you know, I'm always, I'm an adult, mommy. This and It doesn't matter. I don't care if you're 65 years old. You're my baby. You're my baby. I'm God's baby. You're my baby. And, and I'm going to check on you to make sure you're okay, especially if your behavior has gone off track. It's not normally what you would do. So I just praise God on this morning because the call could have been much different. We take for granted that our, we can get that phone call. And people have gotten that phone call. But I just praise God on this morning that I got the call and my baby was okay. And I just thank God for that. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise on this morning. Don't take for granted. Don't take for granted. In everything, give thanks, for it is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In everything, give thanks. Amen. Welcome to church on this morning. Welcome to church. We are looking forward to a praise-filled service. We thank God the, that the atmosphere has been set, that the Lord is here with us. Where there's two or three gathered in his name, there he is in the midst. So he is here with us. And we are excited for what the Lord is going to do on today. Like I said earlier, it's up to you to leave here the way that you came because God does not want you to. So leave your burdens here at the altar and don't pick them back up when you go out. Amen. Don't pick them back up when you go out. When you bring them up here, leave them here and don't pick them back up on your way out of the doors. Hallelujah. Any first time visitors on this morning looking around? I don't I see somebody, but I'm going to let them wave at us. Do we have a first-time visitor? All right, I'm not going to put you on the spot. Amen. Welcome to church on behalf of our... Um, on behalf of our pastor and uh, first lady in their absence, Pastor Andre and Peggy Murphy, uh, we welcome you on behalf of the congregation. You are welcome. Anytime our church doors are open, you are uh, welcome to come join us and worship with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So uh, we have any announcements? We got announcements, amen. Weekly Bible studies, Monday at 6.30. Our men, they are on via Zoom. Uh, please join. If you have not been getting on, you are missing out. I don't hear what they're saying because we're not allowed. The women is not on the men. Uh, Bible study and the men are not on the women, and Camille makes sure of that. So if I even try to listen, he goes in another room and or rolls his eyes at me. So, yeah, and the women um, are. <laughs> uh, yeah, the women are taking a break um, for just a little bit. I think Katisha and First Lady is working on a plan. May. All right, we will be starting up again in May, and and our women. Bible, Bible studies are uh, really powerful. If you have not joined us, uh, please get on and do so. We uh, glean from each other. We learn from each other. We bring the word. We crack open the Bible. And we just try to do this life together, amen, because we need each other. We need each other. We all have different experiences. We're all at different walks. 
uh, on this journey, and so we need each other because somebody who might be further along in one area may be able to help the person who's a little bit behind. And the ones, uh, you know, who might be further along in their, their walk of salvation may, may be able to help a new babe in Christ. Amen. So come on there, not just for yourself. Don't get on because you don't need anything because there's women on there who might need something from you. Amen. Amen. Wednesdays at 630. We have our corporate Bible study. Uh, Pastor Murphy usually brings that to us. Uh, great Bible teaching. He's been kind of teaching on what he has preached about on Sunday, which is really good because we get uh, the word here on Sunday in the form of preaching, but then we get to break it down on Wednesday. And you get to ask questions, and we really get a good understanding of all that went forth on that Sunday. So join us, and that's how we grow. How many people know you can't grow if you're not eating? You can't grow if you're not eating. Amen. You can't grow if you're not feeding your body the right nutrients. And in order to grow spiritually, you have to feed your body the right nutrients, Is that, and that's the Word of God. That's the Word of God. I don't know if you guys have ever been in that place or in that place where you don't um, feel like you're spiritually mature, able to handle certain situations. I know I've been there before, you know, in this early walk with uh, Christ and not having the Word in this heart right here, and, and they're not able to handle life struggles. Struggles are going to come. I don't know if you know that or not. Struggles are going to come. Trials are going to come. Why not be prepared? So we eat on Wednesday morning and uh, Wednesday uh, evenings, and we eat really good. Amen? We eat the Word of God, and we grow thereby. Amen. Ages 12 through 17, we have our Wednesdays, uh, 6.30 p.m., kids Bible study, teen Bible study here at the church. And uh, it's just as important or even more important that our children are getting fed the word of God. Amen. It's even more important because they're our future. Uh, I always tell my husband our kids are going to pick our nursing home or uh, the, the house in the back that we're going to be staying in. You know, so I want them to be godly kids so they can make the right decisions. <laughs> So they can make the right decisions. They're going to be the ones up here teaching and preaching and, and doing all of that and, and, and leading this world into his, his, the next uh, millennial. So we want to make sure that they know that they have to depend on the word of God and that the word is what they can stand on. And not their own strength, not their own talents and abilities, but the word of God. Amen. So bring your children out, your teens, 12 to 17. While we are on Bible study, let them be getting fed so that they can grow and probably be further along than we are when they are our age. Amen? Amen. Amen. Next Sunday, I'm looking forward to this. I'm telling you, I keep talking about it. Woo, let's give the man a hand of praise. I heard they've been here practicing. I made some jokes about it on, on uh, prayer, but I'm looking forward. The Lord is going to show up and show out in the men of LGC on fifth Sunday. Amen. If you have not joined them and you would like to, please see Sister Britta after service today. And uh, she will get you involved. All the men of LGC, they're going to be going forward in worship uh, this Sunday coming up. This Sunday came pretty fast. Amen. So you guys uh, just be prepared for a treat. All right. Amen. And then our free Christian concert, a family event, Saturday, April 29th. Somebody say Saturday, April 29th. Saturday, April 29th. At 7 p.m. Here at LGC, they are throwing a Christian concert. If you like to sing and praise, and lift up holy hands, come out and help support this cause on April 29th at 7 p.m. Amen. And then our young adult ministry, uh, ages 18 to 30. I didn't know 30 years old wasn't young, but it is, I guess. Not young in heart, but young in number. So 18 to 30, if... Um, <laughs> Join them for a potluck Saturday, May 6th. I, uh, the last gatherings that they had, I heard, was pretty good. They did a trivia night, 
and some other things. And uh, Sister Brittany and her husband is kind of leading that ministry. So um, come out and, and enjoy a potluck with them. Get to know the other young adults in the church um, and just fellowship one, one with another. So see Sister Brittany if you have any questions about the young adult ministry. Amen. You're not 25. <laughs> Our prayer number is 701-791-9076, and we are on there every night except for Mondays and Wednesdays. And please join us if you uh, have a prayer or just want to uh, get on there and listen. We do have people that say, I'm just on here listening tonight, and I just need to hear prayer. And if you have a prayer request or a praise report, Please join us on prayer every night at 6.30 p.m. except for Mondays and Wednesdays. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Do we have any birthdays on this morning? Anybody celebrating a birthday? Amen. Jeanette's birthday is next Sunday. Is she here this morning? We'll sing to her. Hopefully she's watching online. We'll sing to her anyway. Amen. Jeanette, any anniversaries? No anniversaries? Well, we'll sing. Jeanette gets this one all to herself. Come on, birthday choir. Don't everybody move at the same time. Michael, Samuel, we need you guys. Thank you. Michael said he's coming out of retirement. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, everybody. Hallelujah. Michael retired and I brought him back, but he said he's going back into retirement. He's been. He makes us look bad. You see how far down he went? He did? He needs to retire then. He going all the way to the floor and stuff. Amen. Making us look bad. Amen. All right. So uh, one more announcement that I forgot to mention earlier. Um, just so, you, so, just so you guys know, whenever you come into the sanctuary and um, we start service, please be mindful and respectful of the sanctuary and put your cell phones on mute. Amen? Re try to remember to put your cell phones on mute just so that we can uh, make sure that we don't have any distractions and the Lord is able to move forth freely uh, without distractions. Amen? Thank you. Thank you for your obedience. Good morning again. Well, thank you, Miss Latoya. Y'all know that she done spread a lot of seed out there, right? She give you a lot of keys to the kingdom, right? You want God to have inhabit? Well, how do you do that? A key says he inhabits the praises. So if you're all down and bummed out having an issue, he inhabits the praises, right? So praise, that's a key. That's an access point, right? Didn't the Lord say, okay, thy kingdom come, thy will be done here on earth as it already is in heaven? Well, praise Jesus and stomp on the devil. That's how you get that done, right? It's an access point. And that's what this is. This is another key to the kingdom that we're fixing to do here okay we can pray for a financial breakthrough for you however prayer isn't the key the key for financial breakthrough is give give as it's in purposed in your heart to do 
So give, okay? We're going to come out of 1 Timothy 6, verses 17 through 19. So if you could please join me and stand in honor of the word of God, please. It says, command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty, nor to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Let them do good, that they may be rich in good works, ready to give, willing to share, storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come. Did you hear that? For the time to come. Don't wait till the storm hits you. Don't wait till the floods wiped you out before you try to use the key to the kingdom that they may be, lay hold on eternal life. Join me in prayer, please. Father God, we just praise you and thank you for your word. You have given us 66 bags of seed, and we thank you for that, Father God. As we apply your word this day so that we can have transformation in our financial realm, in our, as the word said, in eternal life. Help us to propose in our heart to give into your kingdom. Not because you need us to pay your bills. You've been paying your bills for thousands and thousands of years. It's a key so that your kingdom can come into and rest in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen.
Yes, he yes, is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He actually is. between praise and worship. You know what a praise party is. That's when we're having a good time and we in the aisles and we're here, but worship is between you and God. So when I say blessings and glory, they all belong to you, it's not to you, it's to you. So when you're singing it, you're up here. You're with him, you're in one place with him. You don't have to close your eyes. You can worship any way that you choose to, but that is a vertical relationship between you and your father. Amen, amen. Let's 
you've been through this week. I don't know what you went through this morning when you woke up, but how many of you know Jesus? He the answer for every situation. He the answer whatever pain, whatever sorrow, whatever healing, whatever you may be going through. He's your breakthrough. He's that answer. No need to let that enemy play tricks on your mind any longer. No need to play the if or the what game, but Jesus. Jesus is that answer you're looking for. Hallelujah. Pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, God, Lord, we just want to lift you up right now, God. You are worthy, God. If you don't do anything else, Lord, you are worthy, God. Lord, we were formed in your image, God. So, Lord, I just thank you, Lord, for thinking of us even before we were in our mother's womb, God. Lord, for you having a plan for each and every one of your children, Father God. For you loving us, God, even when we couldn't love you, Father God. Even when we didn't want to love you, Father God, you still loved us. You still gave your only begotten son, Father God, to die for our sins, Father God. To be the final, Father God, sacrifice, Lord. So, Lord, I just pray, Father God, that whatever anyone may be dealing with right now, Lord, that they know it's finished, God. That they know, Lord, that there's no healing beyond you, Father God. There's no trial beyond you, Heavenly Father God. That there's no situation beyond you, Heavenly Father God. When we decided, Lord, to follow you, Father God, you said it will be trials. You said it will be temptations, Lord. The enemy will be mad, Father God, for losing someone in his kingdom. But, Lord, you're our strength. You're our power, Father God. So, Lord, I just pray we lean on you, Father God, in those times that the enemy want to play tricks on our mind, that the enemy wants us back in his camp, Lord. I pray you be our strength, that you, you fight that enemy for us, Heavenly Father God, that we don't try to pick it up any longer and try to do it in our way, Father God, but we allow you to do it your way, Heavenly Father God. Touch our hearts, Father God. Touch our minds, Father God, and let us decide this day on what side we want to be on, Father God. You say, I'd rather you be hot or cold, not lukewarm, Father God. Let us not sway, Father God, as the wind sways here in Great Falls, Father God. Let us be on fire for you, Heavenly Father God. Let us decide this day, Father God, that we will scream your name in the streets, Father God. That we know that where our power and where our help comes from, Father God. That we know, Lord, what you created us to be, Father God. Not what the world has called us to be, Lord, but what you called us to be, Heavenly Father God. Oh, glory to your name, Father God. We just thank you, Father God, for what you formed us to be, Lord. We thank you that you're such a good, good Father God, that you care about us, Father God, so much, Father God, that you're always available, Father God, at our beckoning call, that we don't have to wait to the 630 prayer line, Father God, but we can come to you at any time, Heavenly Father God. 
that, Lord, that you hear us any time and at all times, Father God. And, Lord, even as we speak it, we know, Father God, that it's done, Lord, that you've given us that faith, Father God, to know, Lord, and believe that we can believe in a God that we can't see, Father God, that we can believe that you can take care of, Father God, whatever that prayer, whatever that problem may be, Father God, that you've already have it covered, Lord. So I just pray that you work in each and every one of us, Father God, to continue just to trust in you, Heavenly Father God. Let us not be in conform to this wor world, Father God, but be ye transformed, Heavenly Father God, by you renewing of our mind, Father God, by that word renewing of our mind, Father God, by us seeking you daily, Heavenly Father God. This is just not, Father God, a weekly thing, Heavenly Father God, that this, Father God, just isn't a going through the motions thing, Father God. But, Lord, you touch the hearts of your people, Father God, and want this to be a relationship, Father God. Want this to be a one-on-one -on -one with you, Heavenly Father God. Want you, Father God, to really be that Father, Father God. Really come to you and trust in you, Heavenly Father God. Really come to you and knowing, Father God, that you're our source, Father God. Hallelujah, God. Lord, we just give it all to you, Heavenly Father God. Lord, any cancer, Father God, any disease, Father God, anything, Father God, that we know, Lord, that the humanly doctors may be practicing, Father God. But we know with you, Father God, you are that surgeon, Father God, to where it's not practiced. It's a sure thing, Heavenly Father God. You have your children, Father God. So, Lord, we just pray for healing, Father God. Lord, anyone that's going through any long-term sicknesses, Father God, we pray, claim it right now that they're healed right now in the name of Jesus, Father God. We pray you just have your way, Father God. You lose, Father God, anything the enemy's trying to do in any families right now, Father God. Any head that they're trying to take down that the rest may fall, Father God. We pray for our husbands, Father God. Pray for those husbands in those house, the leaders that you made in those homes, Father God, and just pray, Father God, that they be on watch, Father God. That, Father God, that they don't take a day off, Heavenly Father God, that they don't take a minute off, but you keep them on watch on that tower, Father God, seeking you, Lord. Knowing, Father God, that you are their strength, Father God, that even when we don't have the answers that you do, Heavenly Father God, even when we can't see the finish, Father God, that you know the finish, Heavenly Father God. Lord, we pray, Father God, that we focus on this day, Father God. Touch a man, Father God, and strengthen and encourage him, Heavenly Father God. Let him be the man that you've ordained him to be, Father God. Let him lead that home, Father God, with you, Father God. You say a three-bound accord is not easily broken, Lord. So we pray you've been intertwined in those marriages, Heavenly Father God. You be the center of those marriages, Father God. Let your people not treat marriage as a dating game, Heavenly Father God. Let your people, Father God, treat me, treat that marriage, Father God, as a contract that's sealed, Father God, forevermore, Father God. In sickness and in health, Father God, to death do them part, Lord. Lord, you touch those marriages, Father God. Oh, you strengthen them, Father God. Let everyone get wisdom and guidance from you, Father God. Not from that single friend, Father God. Not from that person, Lord, that's maybe stuck in hurt, Father God. But let them get that wisdom and guidance from you, Lord. Lord, let us seek after you, Father God. You're the only one with the right answers we need, Father God. We thank you, Father God. And we thank you for sending forth your angels that you do send, Father God, to speak into our life, Lord. We pray that it's coming from you, Lord. Lord, and we pray, Lord, as we receive your word on this day, Father God, that we not only be hearers, but doers of your word, Father God. Let your word penetrate, Father God. Let us not be in the same place where we are right now, Father God. But let us receive, Father God, and let us move on what you give us this day, Father God. We have a choice, Father God. We can decide to follow you or we can decide not to, Lord. And I pray that each and every person has that zeal, Father God, to follow after you. You say the race is not for the swift or the strong, but those that can endure, Father God. So we just pray for your endurance through this thing, Father God. We pray for your endurance, Father God, and that people may see you as they see us, Father God. That they may see you, Father God, that you be that light, Father God, that you be that strength and encouragement, encouragement that your people are in need of, Father God. And we just give you all the glory, Father God. We thank you and praise you, Lord, and we ask you all this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I 
I just want to speak the name. 